In this series, we have explored some of the many facets that helped create modern-day Fiordland. Through the fires of the earth, the rock was forged. However, the landscape of today is a story told through tremors that have risen and toppled mountains and ice that's left its mark, carving a path through Fiordland. Present-day subduction along the western margin of Fiordland in the South Island of New Zealand is currently uplifting this area. And during the last glacial period, glaciers developed in the high altitude regions of this part of Fiordland National Park. And essentially, they moved down from high elevations to lower elevations. And as they went, they carved their way, essentially sculpting this landscape. The science progresses slowly and we, we build on the work of previous geologists. And back in 2010, New Zealand geologists finished the first really detailed geological map of this area. And we use that to try to find specific kinds of features. And when we do find them, we try to link certain sites to others across the mountain range and generate new geological maps that explain how the mountains and the rocks got this way. And one of our, our recent finds is that there is a very large interconnected fault zone that goes for hundreds of kilometers and appears to have formed as a result of interactions deep in the mantle. Geologists in the field collect samples to be taken back to the lab. Through various methods of research, these scientists have discovered a lot about the history of this place and the geology that formed it. Some of the earliest records of subduction-related magmatism in Fiordland go all the way back to the Cambrian. But one of the most pronounced periods of magmatic activity occurred in the Devonian to the Carboniferous. It created lots of granites that we see in Fiordland National Park. That surge of magmatism would have created some of the first mountains, if you will, in Fiordland National Park. Immediately after this magmatic surge, the mountain belt collapsed and it underwent extension. The mountains fell apart along normal faults or extensional faults. Beyond just extensional faults, the surges of magmatism coupled with subduction along the Pacific and Australian plates have created specific conditions required to produce the unique geology of Fiordland National Park. The evolution of Fiordland National Park in the tertiary involved a combination of compression as well as strike-slip motion like we see along the Alpine Fault today. In compressive trans-tensional environments, we see a combination of strike-slip activity where plates are sliding by each other as well as compression. And in these transpressional environments, we can see both thrust faults as well as strike-slip faults. And we see that in the ancient and modern geologic record of Fiordland National Park. So there were strike-slip faults at that time, as well as thrust faults, all of which were accommodating oblique convergence in Fiordland National Park. As tectonic forces have built and crumbled these mountains, the majestic force of ice was needed to create these picturesque fjords. Glaciers are incredibly effective at erosion. In many cases, uh, geologists believe that glaciers can erode more quickly than the mountain actually can build itself up through tectonic processes, which means that glaciers um, are incredibly important in, in controlling the height of mountain ranges. My name is Richard Hermance. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Geological Sciences here at Cal State Northridge. Uh, my interests in geology are primarily geomorphology and stratigraphy. In particular, I'm interested in what the rock record can tell us about changes in climate and tectonics over time. You can think of glaciers as being rivers of ice. They form by precipitation of primarily snow at the high elevations of the mountain ranges. Uh, that snow falls and in an area of the glacier called the accumulation area, it, it doesn't melt or it doesn't melt immediately. As soon as that ice becomes thick enough, it actually starts to flow under its own weight and flow downhill with the force of gravity. Fjordland is one of the most spectacular examples of glacial geomorphology on Earth. There are, are beautiful uh, vertical walled U-shaped canyons. There are beautiful examples of, of arets, which are ridges between glacial valleys, of, of cirques that form at the head of glacial valleys. And Fiordland is so named because fjords are glacial valleys that were carved out by glaciers that have now been flooded uh, by sea level. So one of the most spectacular features of Fiordland is Milford Sound, which in fact is not a sound, which 
By definition, a sound is a, a river valley that is flooded with ocean water. Milford Sound is actually a fjord. Uh, about 20,000 years ago, sea level was much lower. Uh, the valley of Milford Sound was filled with ice. It was being actively eroded to its beautiful U-shape. Globally, about 20,000 years ago, the glaciers started to shrink. That caused sea level to rise and essentially flood this valley that now no longer had ice in it, and so it's actually Milford Fjord, unfortunately named incorrectly by the initial uh, explorers in the region. Fjordland National Park allows geologists a rare and important window into the processes at work deep inside the earth helping us understand not only this majestic place, but our entire planet as a whole. For this story, told through fire, ice, and tremors, isn't just the story of Fjordland, but the story of planet Earth itself. There is still so much to learn as these scientists unlock the keys to understanding the unique geology of Fjordland National Park.